Okay, really quickly before we jump on the routers, this is the uh, GNS3 diagram. Really don't need anything this complex. R1 is where we're going to be doing most of our work on. I have R2 set up as basically the internet, and then R3 uh, has a fast ethernet connection, so that's our interior network. Honestly, you could just do this with one router. Okay, so here we are on the routers. Uh, R1, like I said, will be where we'll be doing most of our work. Nothing major going on here. Got two connections, one to R2, which is out the serial 00 link, and one to R3, which is out the um, fast ethernet 00. And we also have a 32-bit loopback 0 of quad ones. Like I said, the network itself isn't that important. Uh, I'll do a term link 0. Show run, just to show you that we have just a basic configuration on here. As you can see, interesting archives on there. Oh, oh but I digress. Nothing major here. You know, I just basically put the host name, um, IP address, and then I did do a little configuration under the console line. So let's jump into it. And uh, first of all, let me show you that if you get into configuration mode and issue the auto secure, has no clue what you're asking. Matter of fact, well, it does have an auto. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, auto IP, blah, blah, blah. Anywho, <laughs> just wanted to show you that this command is actually going to be generated from the um, user privilege mode. And here's our options. As I mentioned earlier, forwarding, management, those give you the option to secure just those specific planes. By default, if you hit enter, you're going to be uh, securing both forwarding and management compl complain plane, <laughs> and then um, no interact. And we'll look at this one. No interact means that you don't need to talk to the router; you just let it do its stuff. We're going to go ahead and just take the default and hit enter here, and we can see that our auto secure dialog pops up. And like I said, if you're like most of us, um, you think you know everything and you don't bother reading, you'll just figure it out on the way there. This is pretty important. Control C if you want to break out of this. So at this case, you're like, oh my god, what did I get myself into? Just hit Control C and you're out. But we do want to mess with this. So it's asking the first question. It says, is the router connected to the internet? And in our case, it is. Remember, we have that connection going up to R2. Hit Enter. I'm sorry, hit Wire. Yes, for Enter. The number of interfaces facing the internet. One. And you can see this is sort of dynamic. It's going to ask you uh, additional questions based on the input that you put in there. If we had put no, then it would skip this. If we put, you know, six, then it would expect six interfaces. Uh, it's going to ask you for the interface name that is facing the internet. In this case, it's going to be 000. Let me see if the question mark command. Yeah. See, you can use a question mark at any time for help. This is type of string, so it's not really giving you a lot of information. The reason I put that in there is because if you're like me, I'll put, oh, S00, and it's going to say, I don't know what that is. It wants it spelled out. OK, and so what's interesting here is it just spit out a bunch of stuff and dropped us down here. But what it's showing here is securing the management plane services. And it's telling you what it's doing. It's disabling um, service finger, service PAD, that's x.25 garbage. and I'll have a separate video on this where we go through all of these and explain what they do and why you want to shut them down. This one, disabling CDP, I don't like that, but I'll discuss that later as well. Uh, if we were to break out of this, the rollback feature will show you. So let's try this one more time. Let's do a control C, show auto secure config, and it didn't configure anything. So what I'm saying there is that you know if you break out of that, don't worry about it. It's in the newer code. It has not actually configured what it says it's done up here. It's just getting ready to do it. So let's jump back in this one more time and go all the way through this time. Yes, one serial zero slash zero. Okay. Enter the security banner, put the banner between K and K where K is any character. If you've ever configured a banner before, the K and K are just special characters. So you want to pick something that's not going to show up in the text of your banner. I usually use the pound sign, and this is a banner. Do not enter. Good enough. And then what you want to do is put in another pound sign. And these are just delimiting characters. So it's telling the router that after the pound sign, everything that I type I want in my banner. When you see the second instance of the pound sign, that's when you know that I'm done. We hit enter. OK. Enable secret is either not configured, and it's not configured in this case. One thing to keep in mind here is it does make you, and we'll, we'll do that here. I'll show this. I'll type in Cisco, C-I-S-C-O, all lowercase. Password too short. 
must be at least six characters password configuration failed one thing I would look at before you do this and I like I said I'll, I'll try this again later and report back to see what it, the issue is if you already had an enabled password of Cisco it's five characters I don't know how that handles this I'll, I'll check that out later and tack it on to the end of this lesson but in this case we're just going to use packet lab and you'll have to go ahead and type that a couple times Oh, okay so you've got the secret and then you've got the enable and it wants you to have both I think the reason for that is that if you have a secret you really don't need an enable it's there for backwards compatibility which really is getting to be less and less of an issue so I'll just make that packet lab 2 and you get to see me type a lot or listen to me type a lot uh, configuration of the local user database and here you're going to set up a local user call him packet lab we will give him password of packet lab and we will type a lot of shit twice here's where it gets interesting so most of that makes sense and it says here it's configuring AAA uh, which is AAA local authentication and it's just locked down your console aux and VTY lines for local authentication which is kinda cool because you could use this to learn a little bit about AAA there's videos for AAA and go through that in detail but basically to get into this device now if we were to log out we would have to log in with packet lab packet lab otherwise we're not going to get in so again if you've got people out there with privilege level 15 and they're able to issue this command and dick around they might set something up where they just smash the keyboard a couple times it's unlikely because they'd have to do it twice the same way for the password and it would have to be six character passwords uh, let me get out of this rat hole real quick but you don't want them doing this because they can set up where they you know they set up a username and password that only they know or they forget what they typed in and suddenly you're locked out of your device blocking period for when login attack detected this is one of those cases where if you're not um, familiar with the login blocking function and I have some videos on that uh, that goes through that in detail definitely check those out but you get to this and be like, what the hell is it asking? And so you issue your question mark and say, oh, it'll tell me what's going on. No. All it's telling you is what it wants in response. You have to give it something. You have to give it a decimal. Like I said, I'm not going to go into explaining login blocking here. Uh, basically, what I just configured was saying that um, somebody tries to log in with something other than, I guess in this case, Packet Lab, Packet Lab. If they say bad user, bad user. Uh, three times within one minute then we're gonna go ahead and lock everybody out for 10 minutes again check out those videos and go through that in extreme excruciating boring detail <laughs> and uh, you'll know more than you need to know about that's I just want to point this out that there might be stuff that comes up in this auto secure dialogue where a, a rank amateur would be like I have no clue what the hell they're asking so while it is a single command and it is meant to lock this down you do kind of have to know a little bit about what you're doing uh, se configure secure or I'm sorry SSH um, server sure we'll do that and it'll want a domain name again this is one of those situations like okay I don't know what this is or I hit yes if I hit a question mark type in a string well you know what do you mean by a string and enabling Ceph okay so it's telling me what it's doing and I'm not gonna do C back that's side what I want to get into today hit enter TCP intercept again if you don't know what this is you'd have to find out we're gonna enable it it doesn't really require any parameters and so now it's giving me what the configuration is and you can see look at that I quickly paused the video here and I dropped this into an Excel spreadsheet and just for those that are keeping track that's about 86 commands if you include the uh, the bang and the end statement here so it does configure quite a bit and you could see that if you had to go back in and uh, get rid of all this stuff it would be time consuming and some of this stuff I would never even thought of no mop enabled um, no IP mask reply you know and this is under the interfaces even the interfaces that are currently shut down uh, you get to this point and you still are able to chicken out you can say apply this configuration by hitting enter or yes or again you can hit control C and uh, hopefully nothing on this got written it shouldn't with this code version we're gonna go ahead and commit to this it's gonna take a while because I know it has to build that RSA key and it's done